Alright guys, so this will be a review of the Komatsu PC200 in 150th scale manufactured by NZG and KenCraft. I feel that this is a model that um, more people should buy, but I do see why they don't buy it, and it's because it's very delicate, and, you know, it's not often that you find a 150th scale model that is so delicate like this, but for some reason I just feel that this one is just so delicate, and I think that might be because it has so many parts and whatnot. So, start off at the undercarriage. Um, one thing I want, want to say is that I have come to not like these NZG tracks. And I realize that because a lot of people that do watch these videos have dioramas and use these models in dioramas and everyone knows that these tracks just aren't very good for dioramas. Although they look uh, super nice, we all know that they are extremely delicate and really anybody could break them. And I could even notice on mine some of the pads are twisting out of the connections. You can't deny that they aren't detailed and look very nice. But this seems like a shelf only model, unless you just place it in a diorama or something. If we turn on the carriage to view it, we can see that the pads are, you know, very detailed and whatnot. But once again, they will come out of the links no problem. And that really is a turn off to uh, most collectors, I feel like, or at least a lot of people that view my videos. On the undercarriage, you can see that it has the warning labels and whatnot, but if you notice, the tracks don't match the undercarriage, and I feel like that's just, you know, kind of strange how they wouldn't use the same paint on them, but for whatever reason, they didn't, and it seems like that takes away the appearance of the model for me, and I don't really display it with most of my other collection. I kind of display it off the side, and uh, that's mainly because... I noticed that when I got it, and it just makes it look very strange. Going up to the cab, we can see that the cab is really nice. Um, you know, really open windows and clear windows, and you can see the inside of the cab, and the inside of the cab is actually really nice. Uh, it has the pedals, and it has the monitor, joysticks, and the seat, and just really nice. If you look right here, you can see there's a railing, and that is metal, which is very nice. And up top, there's an antenna. That is plastic. Um, one thing I do want to say about this is every single part they give you an extra of, I assume because they know it's so delicate. Over here, you can see uh, the vents. They don't go through all the way through, unfortunately. And uh, turning the machine, you can see the counterweight. And, uh, you know, as, as you can tell just from seeing these few parts, it is very nicely made, but once again, very delicate. You can see it has the camera up top and the Komatsu logo turning to the right side. Again, very nicely made. The decals are very nice, and uh, the paint finish is very nice. Railing over here, uh, I believe, is metal, and right here is plastic. They don't give you another one of these. They pretty much only give you actual plastic parts. And uh, if we look right here, the engine cover does open, um, which is a very, very nice feature. If we look inside, we can see the engine. Unfortunately, the engine doesn't go completely through, and you could see the flat of the plastic casting underneath. But nonetheless, it's still very nice, and a very nice feature that they let the, op the engine open. Because it seems like whenever there's a model with the engine open, everybody says that they have to have it. Looking up top, you could see ports for the fuel and hydraulic and a couple of other vents and if we look down there you can see there is hydraulics leading up to the boom which is where the review will lead to right now. Now looking at the boom you'll probably say where is the Komatsu logo and it I really don't know. I think that the machines for the Japanese and Asian market which is where this model is mainly made for uh, don't have the logos on the right side and instead only have them on the left. Why they do that, I do not know, but it seems like every single model that comes from there is always like that. So I think it has something to do with that. Anything besides that, I really don't know why it's like that. Looking at it, it does have hydraulic lines running to it, and on the back of the cast of the boom, you can see it does have the hard lines running up there and then the flexible ones right there. Another thing is, it only has a light on the cab side, so I really don't know. 
if you look at the cylinders, they are very thin, and I like that because it really does make it look in scale. Komatsu logo, and uh, it does have a plain stick, as you could see, but it does have the hydraulics leading down, so I will give them that. The bucket is very small and not deep at all, and that's something that someone said on my Facebook fan page, and I noticed that, and it is something that, you know, I really did take into consideration. Now, if you really do look at it, it isn't very deep at all, and in my opinion, it's it's not an ugly bucket, but it seems like a bucket on a mini excavator. And for some reason, I just picture this machine throwing dirt quick and really not mass excavating, not like it really could at add its, add its size, but it just, you know, kind of takes away from the model. Besides that, a really nice bucket. I like the cutting edges on the side. Um, the teeth on it also are really nice. And one thing which I'm going to go over now is the movement of the model. Uh, if you look, the bucket comes back very far and also goes in very far. So you really can't say that they didn't do good with that. The stick, which is mid right there, will go out that far and will also come in this far, which I mean, I guess you could say that could have better movement, but what more could you really ask for? You can't really nitpick. Boom height, it will come up that far and then it will dig that far, which is m more than exceptional. And if we look, it's right there, so uh, it's pretty nice, so it will look very good in a diorama. The only complaint I have on mine is that the stick cylinder won't stay, and I would like to display it, you know, like that, but after over time, it just drops, and by over time, I mean a couple of minutes. So. You might even be able to see it falling uh, on the camera. But besides the fact, a very nice model, very nicely detailed and made. Unfortunately, it is, it is extremely delicate. So for that reason, it's on my shelf and I rarely touch it. I even had it dusted off before this review. And uh, that is unfortunate because, you know, it is very nicely detailed. But if you are a collector who just mainly displays, you know, for a shelf, it's a definite you know, must have, but if you're someone who likes to, you know, make a diorama every now and then, I would definitely not get it because I can almost guarantee you that it will get destroyed in a diorama. Besides the fact, like I said, very nice and I hope you enjoyed the review.